Hello, dear friends. Poet WP. I, uh, am really pondering on whether or not to read you this poem, you know, over a number of weeks. This poem will inevitably offend and hurt, maybe make some people angry. But I've determined that this is my truth. And my, like I've stated before, my primary mission in this life is that of an anti-war activist. <coughs> um, and I've mentioned before I live in a military town, a southern military town. And I'm... Um, See, the thing is, from my point of view, the best way we could support our troops is by bringing them home. There's so much more better work they could be doing than fighting another man's war in the Middle East. Uh, you know, the, the possibilities are limitless. They could be doing so much better, so many better things with their time, so much better things with their time. And all that needless death is just, it's, it's getting old. It's got to end. We're tired of it. But it wasn't always this way, you know. I'm old enough to remember the time before 9-11. I was a young adult before 9-11. One of the other things about me, I, I, was, I was born obsessed with Jesus. Well, also, at a, and, and, and God, of course. But, I was also born with a deep obsession, for, well not born, but by the time I was like five, <laughs> I was obsessed with martial arts. Of course, this had a lot to do with the fact that it was the 80s, and ninjas were like uh, catnip to young people. <laughs> for real. 80s were all about crazy, cheesy ninja movies, man, and I watched them all. <laughs> yeah, so like, I was super... This is before Power Rangers or any of that bullshit. This is before Ninja Turtles, even. <clears throat> this was like Chuck Norris cartoons on Sunday morning and shit, man. Yeah. I used to love it. Chuck Norris cartoon, man. Shout out to the old school heads. And they had a Rambo cartoon. Yeah, man. G.I. Joe. And then Ninja Turtles came along. And by the time Power Rangers came along, shit, I was, I wasn't, I was, you know, and I was like 14. <laughs> but, now I'm rambling about other things. But yeah, the point I was getting at is, uh, martial arts. By the time I was six years old, I was taking martial arts classes. Twice a week. Okay, so, I... Learned Shotokan Karate in a lesser known, uh, lesser known style called Kamabushi Kai Karate, that is it translates to Divine Spirit Warrior. So, and I've continually learned, still learning. My best friend is now in life is my sensei's former sensei's son who now runs the school. So, and. My sensei is one of the main dudes who helped form and set up and determine what will be the Special Forces Regiment hand-to-hand -hand combat training on the local base where I live. So these Special Forces guys, they've had a lot of training for months, but a lot of them weren't really trained before that. And they know a mixture of a lot of things. Really, everybody's embracing jiu-jitsu. Brazilian jiu-jitsu has dominated for so long. That, but it's just other forms are starting to more merge in more pure fashion now. MMA kind of clouded the scene a little. Not to, not to detract from MMA. They're brilliant tacticians. And the cardio you need to do that kind of thing is unreal. Um, here I am rambling. It's going on five minutes. I haven't even read the poem yet. But that's okay. That's okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm a well-trained martial artist. My karate is good enough, right? But 
after the soldiers started coming back from the wars, the Iraq wars, especially at first, when they first started coming back from, man, it was bad. Because I was a bar fly. I used to go to the bar three, four times a week. I was a total bar fly. I fancied myself uh, Henry Chanowski from Barfly. <laughs> right. I was obsessed with Charles Bukowski. And so I was like, you know, out there drinking like a fish, partying it up in my early 20s. Total bar fly. Well, when you're a bar fly in a military town, you run into lots of soldiers, right? And I've been close friends with soldiers, lots of them over the years. You know, they're just like any other people. They're just normal people trying to do a job and feed their family, you know. But a lot of these guys that get it, that are in the infantry or special forces, they get a real taste for killing. And it's like Hemingway said, and I'm going to paraphrase, I'm going to butcher the quote. Hemingway was said something along the lines of, you know, he, the sentiment he expressed in it is what he said was basically, I'm not going to be able to quote it because I don't have it in front of me, said, you know, you're a hunter and you get addicted to the hunt. But then once you go off to war, you realize the most cunning prey is human beings and you become addicted to the thrill of the hunt. And that's dangerous. That's psychotic shit right there. So a lot of these men, that's why so many soldiers kill themselves. Because they feel guilty for the shit that their country has made them do. It's that simple. You know, so you, of course, you can delve into all kinds of psychosis around that, but that's the root of it. But there is another sub-segment of these men. A sub-segment, a set, a set within the set that really get addicted to killing. They get addicted to the fight, the rush. They get addicted to the battle. And that's why uh, they go back and back and back. I've met guys that are on like their eighth tour or some shit. Like they just, and they'll say like, the only time I'm ever restless and, and not at peace is when I'm not at war. Yeah, that's fucked. So once in a while, when these soldiers started coming back, Especially at first. Oh my God, at first it was crazy. Because I would be at the, I would go to the bars and stuff, you know, and, and I might see a fight, I don't know, every six months, right? And I'd be there like, shit, three or four days a week. Different bars, several bars, right? Then all of a sudden, they all went away to war, Iraq, right? And it full on, especially around the time of Fallujah, man. When they first started coming back, oh my God. It was insane, man. <laughs> the fights went up like 800% or something. There were fights all the goddamn time. It was every other goddamn time I went to the bar that was a fucking fight. <clears throat> and I've seen, them, I've seen them swing on each other. I've seen them swing on college kids. I've seen them swing on women. I've seen them swing on the bartenders. I've seen them swing on bouncers. I've seen them swing on cops. Mostly they just swing on each other. And college kids. College dudes. And they, uh, I've been attacked four or five times. Four times I was attacked, and then the fifth time it was an attempted attack, but fate intervened, and uh, everyone left without unscathed. And that's about all I'll say about it. Yeah, I've been there were four times I got into some knockdown, drag out bar fights, man. Uh, one time, and I always defended myself. I've never started a fight in my adult life, never. Never. Never will. It's not in me. I'm trained better than that. Karate is for self-defense only. The divine spirit warrior path of style of karate really emphasized that to us. Defense only. Never attack. Only defend. Okay? Never attack. They swing on you. It's go time. If you know what you're doing, then you, you won't let your ego get involved. Just handle it like a professional. So yeah, one time a guy started a fight with me because I sung John Lennon's Imagine on karaoke. Another time a guy started a fight with me because he was sitting in a booth behind me and he overheard me talking liberal politics to my friends. He didn't like that. Another time 
A guy started a fight with me because I had long hair. I used to have long hair, jet black long hair like Ozzy Osbourne. You know? But, you know, you, you walk through life thinking you can just beat the shit out of anybody. And eventually you'll swing on the wrong long haired hippie freak. But, so I began to see these scarred men come back and just losing their fucking minds. It's like, bro, you're not in a war zone anymore. Chill the fuck out. But, uh, yeah, so I wrote this poem about these poor unfortunate souls. <coughs> and, uh, this poem, I must make the distinction. This is a poem I wrote for myself. This is not an automatic writing poem, as I've stated before. 85% of what I write is just straight pulled out of the ether of meditation. Deep transcendental meditation. It just surfaces in my head. Boom, there it is, and I write it down. I, don't, I literally don't know what the next line is until I'm writing it. Sometimes I don't even know what the next word is until I'm halfway through writing it down. Literally. Believe it or not, it doesn't matter to me. But that's my process. I just pull it out of the ether from meditation, right? And then I, I write it all down. And I looked down, I was like, oh, okay, that's what it was. And I read it back, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Mm, that's interesting. Half the time, I don't even know what the hell it was until I'm done writing it. So, but this is not one of those poems. This is a poem I sat down and thought about and wrote for myself. And it's called, this is, of course, is one of the, I have several copies of it. This is one of the disposable copies because it, whatever. I'm going to explain my process. This one's called... <clears throat> wait a minute, let me get a drink of water. Snake Charmers and Haji Hunters. <clears throat> Drinking in the downtown area bars where jarheads examine college boys as though they were exotic, colorful songbirds that have never seen, never been seen by human eyes. And they all congregate and huddle like a herd of silverbacks. And sometimes one will get far too close to another one, and they expel unnatural, human-like sounds at great volume, making everyone jump a little in their seats for a moment. As they inhale their golden and amber bubbly brews, they search for manhood and swap stories of state-sanctioned violence. Ah, the glory that is Rome. Conquests may never cease. An erection looking for a hole. And for the night, Death takes its R&R, &R, and the blood-spattered faces that can no longer scream become a little more blurry in the distorted dreams that haunt the empty shells that were once men. As the night wanes into morning, the taxis round them up, some of them carrying others who have long since puked and turned pale in stumble-bum decadence. And those of us who have retained our individuality just shake our heads as we walk away having down the last call, thankful that we did not become the enemy on that night. So, yeah. fucked up it's fucked up what you have to go through when you're a person like me in a place like this they'll try to fucking kill you you be you and they'll try to kill you so I'm a hermit <laughs> okay hope you like the poem get you on the next catch you on the next one